I'm Tom Gerise, I'm from France, and actually my presentation will, will uh, resemble the previous one. I'll, I'll talk about a, a platform that we have developed in, in uh, France, which is called Cortec Lab, part of the FIT project. Uh, of course, so it's, it's, a, it's a research uh, platform, I would say, a test bed that is open for the research community, but also for industry. It's, uh, it's free to access that. And it's a team project. So these are the name of the, the, the people that have been uh, participating to this project. So just before I start, a uh, little bit of geography. So we are from Lyon, here in France. And we are from uh, an institution which is called INSA Lyon, um, which is basically the, the, the yellow part here uh, on the map. So it's a big, it's like a technical university. It's a, we call it uh, engineering school. And basically, um, it's also a project which is financed by INRIA, which is a research institute in France. And I, I'm heading a, a research team that I started for, for, for that project, which is called SOCRAT, which means Software and Cognitive Radio for Telecommunication. And the idea is to bring people uh, from different scientific communities, so uh, radio communication, uh, signal processing, and, and computer science embedded system in order to work on software-defined radio and cognitive radio network. So uh, I'm actually from, from, I'm not from the, from the radio community, I'm, I'm from the compilation, I'm, I'm from computer science. And, uh, and, and, and this team is in charge of building this platform. So just to introduce the, um, the project, it's, it was financed by the French government uh, in uh, 2011. It's called an Equipex, equi Excellent Equipment. And the, the idea, it's called FIT, okay, Future Internet of Things. The, the idea of the global project is to uh, enhance research on, on future internet. And in the end, uh, what happened is that uh, FIT happens to be a federation of platforms. Some of these platforms were already existing, like Sense Lab, which is now called I IoT Lab, that you might know. And one platform was decided to be uh, built from scratch, and this was Cortec Lab. So Cortec Lab, the idea is that uh, we would not have any uh, wireless test bed where we could re uh, really work on the physical layer of the uh, telecommunication protocol. And the idea was to build this platform in order to have this kind of tool for the scientific community. And we're having in mind the fact that we want to uh, study uh, objects like software-defined radio and cognitive radio network. So that was the goal in, in 2011. So we had uh, built this room. Uh, so this is a, a map of the room. And it's in the basement of our building. And it's shielded. So the, the red part here is a metal tissue that isolates the, the signals from, from the external. And it's isolated. Uh, it's also, it has also some absorber, some radio absorber so that the, uh, there are not too many reflections on the wall. And we decided to uh, put the, the, the nodes on the, on the ceiling. So, so the idea is that the node is a PC and a radio node. And I will come back on, on which radio node we have installed in the room. And so that's a photo before we installed the node. And that's a photo of, of the room as it is now. So uh, the idea of, uh, of, of uh, what's important, well, some, f some feature of, of the room, sorry. Uh, the size of the room is approximately 200 square meter. Uh, we have approximately 40 software-defined radio nodes of various type. My most is uh, and, and you can imagine that you could bring your own uh, front end to, to, to plug in onto a PC. Uh, so these nodes are USRP and Pico SDR, so I will come back on that. And they operate between 300 megahertz and 3 gigahertz. Uh, we Basically, we had this three year of deployment of the project here, uh, which are finished. The project, uh, well, the, 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 the platform started in 2014. And we are in the exploitation phase. And, uh, and the, uh, okay, the, the amount for this project was about 1 million euro by the French government. OK, so now I'm. Uh, Coming to the uh, technologies that we've deployed in the, in the platform. So of course, uh, the technology is evolving uh, very quickly. So we cannot replace the nodes every six months. So at that time, there was no uh, X310 uh, and so on. So we decided to, well, we, we had a long discussion about what, what kind of node we, we, we should use in the platform. And finally, we, we came up with this choice 
of USRPs and PICO SDR. So the USRPs that we have are uh, National Instrument USRPs 2932. And uh, the reason why we chose this node are because of, of the huge community that was uh, working on it. Well, huge is maybe a little bit too much, but th there, there was some program running on this, on this node and this was very uh, comfortable for us to, to start experiment. But the thing is that they, they did not have uh, an FPGA that you could easily program as a user. So it means that if you are to target a uh, uh, strong uh, MIMO uh, OFDM uh, protocol, you will not be able to reach real time. Uh, so we uh, added to that this uh, PICO SDR uh, node uh, from NUTAC, which uh, them had this uh, FPGA, uh, Xilinx Vertex 6 FPGA, connected to two radio boards. So uh, that was, okay, and, and, and we had also MIMO capability with these, these nodes. So the, the downside of, of this node is that you had to program the FPGA, uh, I would say by hand, and I will come back to it uh, uh, later. So, so the idea that we had in this platform uh, was really to be, to, to develop open source program and to develop program by ourselves not to buy IPs on Xilinx or, or, or Amarisoft and, and run them on the platform, is really to, to have a platform that the community can reuse the work of, of uh, everywhere else. And it works very well uh, for GNU Radio, I think, and it's a little bit more complicated for VHDL. So, um, but I think it's still a, a very important uh, goal uh, of this platform today. So uh, finally, each of these nodes are connected to a PC, which is uh, represented here. The important uh, information here is that the, the, the OS that we run on the PC is uh, Linux. And well, we have this Ethernet switch, so we can switch on, switch off the, 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 the room uh, from anywhere in the world. And uh, the choice that we made is that the, 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 this PC will, the, the user of the platform will not have access directly to this PC, will not be root on this PC. It, basically, there is a server who is deploying program on the PCs, and so you, well, this has advantage and, uh, and, and drawbacks, but uh, currently you cannot uh, install the, the version you want of the OS on, on the PC of the platform. Okay, so I'm gonna spend some time in um, presenting the, the programming flow of the platform. Then I'll try to do a short demo, uh, if I can, uh, uh, here, uh, about connecting to the platform. And then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, depending on the time remaining, I'll, I'll uh, present some of the experiments that we did. And uh, so, well, I think you know probably how to program USRP, so I'm not, not gonna take a long time on this slide. The only thing is that you are not forced, of, to, of course, to use new radio. You can use whatever program you want as soon as it interface with the, uh, the driver. And once you have uh, set up your program, you go basically to minus. Uh, minus is our uh, middleware that will deploy the program on the nodes, okay? So basically the student or the, the guy who is using the platform is, is developing a, a program on his uh, office. He has probably a USRP. And when he wants to develop, deploy it on, on say like 20 USRPs, he can just download the program and with a little script indicate which program will run on which SAPs and then the, the, the minus uh, middleware will deploy it. So if you are to, to, to program uh, Pico SDR, it's a little bit com more complicated because you have the uh, bitstream to, uh, to set up. So same scenario, you have to generate the bitstream, download the bitstream, and then uh, we can uh, have it run on the Pico SDR. So this is a little animation to show how it's, uh, it's going on. So the user is connecting to the server with an SSH connection, then is downloading his program and it's submitting what we call a task. The task is transmitted to the uh, server which is deploying the task on the, on the node. So during when, once the, the program are deployed, the, the each program is started by the, the server and during the execution of the experiment, you can have uh, real-time information, like, uh, for instance, you can have the log of, of each node. You can have, um, we, we have developed a small tool that use a WebSocket to, uh, to, to see uh, um, spectrum uh, analysis during the experiment. And once it's finished, 
uh, every file on each node is brought back to the server and the user has access to uh, like log file and, 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 and STBR and so on, on of, each, uh, if of each node. So I, <coughs> if I can try to, uh, to show you how it works. Okay, so I'm just connected um, by SSH here, okay? So I had to put a VPN connection because uh, it was running, I mean, uh, we, had a, we had a port which is not standard, so some, some Wi-Fi uh, network will block it. And basically, um, I have a, let's say, whoops, sorry. Something, did something wrong, okay. <laughs> Let's try it again. Well, I'm really sorry. I'm not used to this kind of, uh, of thing. So completely stuck. Okay, well, I'm sorry. Uh, what I will do is that I will. Um, oh my God! <laughs> I will continue with the presentation because I cannot uh, handle that. So let's try to find back where is it? It's here. Okay. Okay. So what I wanted to show you is just that it's working, but actually I'm not very uh, familiar with this Windows system, so uh, it. Believe me, it's really working. I mean, you SSH to the, to the uh, server, and then you get, uh, you launch uh, a task, and then you can see some, some spectrum animations running on. But unfortunately, I cannot show you, but I have it on my, on my uh, side here. So, um, yeah. So, uh, well, these are so, some of the improvements that we did recently for the guy who know, uh, who know the platform. We basically uh, have uh, improved this uh, visualization tools. Well, I saw some much more interesting tool here, but this one is very simple. It's, it uses very uh, low uh, connection and it's, it's quite useful. You just have to have a web browser. Uh, and then we, we add this access to the log of the minor server and of each node during the experimentation, which is very useful in practice because when something goes wrong, you, you directly, you, you don't have to wait for the end of the experiment. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about the experiments that we did and that I think are, are interesting from the research point of view. So the first experiment is about uh, co cooperative communications. So, um, so, so basically you have a set of base station and you have a set of user equipment and uh, the user equipment are attached to a base station but of course they listen to the uh, the signal sent to the other user, either of the same base station or the other base station. And uh, the idea that you have here a multidimensional uh, uh, channel because you have MIMO and OFDM. And, and the idea is that each base station will not use all the dimension of the uh, transmission so that uh, the interference can be reduced. Uh, each base station can choose some of the channel and, and, uh, and not interfere with the other base station. So the problem is that this has to be done dynamically because uh, the channel is changing very rapidly. So uh, the, the idea of interference alignment is that you have this signal here which is received at the user, which is a signal which is sent to him, coded by the base station, then goes through the channel and decoded by the user plus the noise, of course, and plus the other signals which are sent to the other user of the 
the same base station and of the other user of the other base station. And the idea is to reduce this part uh, and even to nullify it by um, pre-coding uh, pre the signal in, in such a way that it, it falls into the, the null space of the other uh, base station signal. So that was presented in 2011 uh, as an idea, as a theoretical uh, result. And to my knowledge, it has not yet been really implemented. And so what we did in, in Cortex Lab uh, is trying to implement that, but we did not implement the full protocol. The protocol it basically says that you, the user equipment will uh, sense the channel of the interferer and feedback in some way the channel to the uh, base station, to its base station, so that the base station can be informed its own transmission and, and uh, fall into the new space of the other uh, interferer. And what we did is uh, we implemented that on, on USRP. As a, we had one base station and one interferer here and three user equipment. But we, don't, we didn't implement the whole loopback. We just basically, uh, each, interfer each user equipment uh, estimated the channel of the interferer and computed from the formula the uh, improvement that it would have in, in, the, uh, in, in the throughput if the uh, base station had modified uh, its own communication, okay? And there is an iteration like that. The channel is changing, so you see this H here, our channel uh, modeling, because of course in the room the channel is very static, so you have to introduce some, some uh, uh, some kind of diversity in, the, in, the, in your design. So I'll come back to that. This is uh, one of the problems of the currently that we have. And well, this uh, will be uh, published by uh, soon in, in, in communication, IEEE communication magazine. This was a work by uh, Jean-Marie Gors and, and uh, Yasser Fadlala. And it was also presented at the Green Touch final meeting. The Green Touch is a huge consortium that, that worked on, on uh, um, say lowering the, the uh, energy impact of communication for the next decade. So these are what we get at the end. This is uh, the channel estimated between user equipment one and its base station, the channel between user equipment one and the interferer. And here you have the gain obtained uh, if you use the, uh, if you use interference alignment uh, depending on time, so which is uh, flowing on the way. So that was the first experience uh, really original, I would say, that we did on, on, uh, on Cortec Lab. The second one I want to talk about is related to Internet of Things. So it's a collaboration that we have with the Orange Lab. And basically, uh, the idea, of course, you know that a lot of uh, sensors will be deployed and a lot of them will use wireless communication. And basically, we don't know exactly what will look the spec how will look the spectrum when all these sensors will be uh, will be deployed, and Orange wanted to know if uh, it's, uh, they wanted to to uh, design a base station or a sink that would be able to to get uh, many signal even if they are received simultaneously on different frequency and on different uh, power. So the idea of this study was to um, emulate a, a big number of a sensor on one USRP, so like hundreds of sensors on one USRP because the, the protocol is very simple. And, uh, and then to see, to record the signal and to see if we can decode the signal with, uh, you know, orange material or whatever. So for that, we had to have a scenario for Internet of Things. So basically we used a, there is an Etsy uh, document which basically pr predicts uh, given for, for a given side of a, of a small city, the number of uh, nodes that we will have per sink for uh, each application, like gas metering, water metering, and so on. And they also uh, indicate the, the type of packet, the, the DSG cycle of each application, and, and the, the protocol, and so on. So we did not invent that our, ourselves. We took this data, and we built a a, a, an, an Internet of Things scenario, which is basically this data, uh, plus the number uh, in practice of sensor that we want to, to uh, emulate, the virtual position of this uh, sensor, uh, basically which will in, uh, influence on the, the attenuation and on, on the channel, and the uh, number of, chan of sensor emulated by each USRP, okay? 
So, for instance, Etsy also di di distinguished between uh, several kinds of sensors, or the ones which are in line of sight of the, of the sink, non-line of sight, or underground, with an attenuation, and so on. So, in the end, what we um, did is this uh, multiple emission block, which basically we had uh, one emission chain per sensors, and we just add the signal uh, with the gain or, or a channel emulating uh, the, the, the channel between the sensor and the sink, depending on its position. And this was made from, from file, uh, which represents the scenario that we wanted to emulate. So this block cannot run in real time because we, we did not optimize it. We just you know, uh, run all these uh, this, uh, emission chain in parallel. Well, but we recorded basically the signal in a file, and then we could play a file when, whenever we want. And the nice thing about that is that we have also this uh, information that, that will allow to debug uh, whenever we try to decode the signal. Okay, we know how many collision we had within the USRP. We know, how, we know exactly what, which are the bits that each uh, um, sensor have sent and the signal that they have sent and so on. So that's what we, de we have developed. And uh, we deployed that on nine USRP. Uh, we choose to implement in, in that case one protocol on each kind of uh, one kind of protocol per USRP, and in the end we have more than 1,000 sensors, and we had one USRP to, to record the signal. Okay, so basically this is a, a snapshot. Well, it's not a snapshot, but it's uh, you know um, recording the maximum of the of the spectrum to see that there are different uh, different sensors on different. Uh, frequency with different power, and, uh, and that's it. I mean, we, we did not yet uh, really uh, went uh, up to the decoding because uh, this was the end of the project, but the idea is that we have a tool now that is able to emulate whatever scenario you, you want and whatever uh, property you want to test. For instance, you can test the uh, collision that occurs uh, with this scenario, and we have, we have I mean, proven that, that uh, uh, if you have a simple, if you have only one application, uh, you, you can uh, deduce the uh, probability of collision, and we have the same, uh, I mean, uh, the same number of collision occurring in practice uh, when we run the, the, the experiment. Okay, uh, last thing I want to talk about is about uh, programming the Pico SDR. So, um, well, the idea is, as I said, we didn't want to use a pre-made waveform. We wanted to do uh, our own design. I don't know if it was a good idea, but anyway, we, we wanted to use this uh, design kit, which is called BSDK, which, which basically you use VSGL. So, of course, you have some IPs provided here by NUTAC. Like, it's like uh, RFNOC. You have some, some kind of driver that allows to plug in your design on, on, the, uh, on the, uh, the machine. And the result uh, was a complete open source IEEE 802.15.4 uh, with a free option of the, the standard. But actually, uh, I would not say it's completely complete because it's not really running. It was very painful. We had a, it took us one person here, and this person is left now, and I'm not really able to have it run. And we actually never uh, really uh, completely uh, run the, the, the receiver correctly. So. Just to show you uh, the, 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 the idea, well, here it, it uses all the user space, but actually it's only 5% of, uh, of the user of the FPGA, which is used by the design. And, and these are the uh, infrastructure with the, which is provided by NUTAC to interface your design. So you have your PC here. You have uh, what they call RTDX, which is a 5.4 uh, protocol for connecting you to your design. And you have here the, the, uh, the, the radio board, which is which can be configured with the microblaze program from the PC. So, it, I mean, it works, but it was very difficult, and, and I, I, uh, I will come back on that, but uh, this is one of the things that I think we, we, which, which stuck us for, for the moment to, for using this platform is how to deploy easily uh, a, a handmade, on, uh, handmade uh, VHGL program or VHGL program on, on this platform to take advantage of the power of the FPGA. 
Okay, so I have a couple of slides to the uh, link we have to the GNU radio community. So actually we are, we are quite new to this community because we, we started using GNU radio three years ago. So we, we also use that for teaching as, as, a previous, as in the previous talk. And we had, of course, uh, used the, the designs that have been made by, by the community and we are very uh, grateful for that. And uh, so we, here are some of the simple, uh, you know, uh, things that have running and, and the existing demo that we provide, so as uh, all the demo that I show are, are open source, the user can, can, uh, can itself uh, have them on, on its account and, and run them and modify them and so on. So we are in the process of uh, characterizing the channel between uh, every uh, pair of nodes in, uh, in the room. And the, the, the reason why I'm here is, that, well, first of all, because I learned a lot of things by coming here, and that was a very nice experience, but also because we need users, okay? And currently, we don't have many users because it's, well, as you know, it's not that obvious to, to be used to GNU radio uh, environment. And uh, the, the typical uh, user that we're targeting currently, and we had some experience about that that were successful, is a PhD student that has developed some kind of uh, test or protocol or or our optimization on, on his material and want to deploy that and, and test it on uh, like, like say 10 or 20 uh, uh, communication device. So, um, so, this, so, and of course we need also uh, all the work that can be done by the community to, to be tested on the platform that would be very nice to have more waveform and uh, especially user communication, cognitive radio uh, experience, and so on. This is why the platform is here. So there remain uh, important questions that I'm not sure uh, if there are an, an answer yet. So I'll start with the second one here, uh, enable dynam dynamic data flow in, in, in uh, GNU radio. So I, I think it's certainly possible, but I, I don't figure out how the, the best way to do it. I mean, changing the data flow dynamically without losing uh, a sample. And that is necessary if you want to implement a very uh, advanced, uh, uh, you know, cognitive protocol where the, 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 the SDR is supposed to reconfigure itself very rapidly, even during one, uh, one frame. Uh, the, sec the first one here is probably the most important. How can we compile easily to FPGA? So I had a very uh, nice tutorial about RFNOC, which is a very nice tool. And, uh, I appreciate that, but I mean, it's not solving completely the problem. I'm looking for something which is agnostic of the, uh, pla of the target platform, okay? So uh, uh, I just show you this slide that uh, we had been, uh, we, we had uh, launched a project in France, but the project was not uh, financed, so it was not funded. So I'm just throwing the idea of, we, we need some kind of integrated tool that is trying to uh, build on uh, existing tool and uh, trying to um, figure out what will what what this tool have in common where what are the abstraction layer that we can use uh, and what are the semantics that we can use at, at each level in order to have a real uh, environment or I would say set of tool that could compile waveform onto various machines okay so so the 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 problem that I see now is that if I invest a lot on the Pico SDR and then we decide that, that finally we, we, we go for the E310, then we'll, I'll, I'll, I will have to do this work again. And this is something that is never, is really, uh, I mean, um, adopted in the software community. And I don't know why it's much more difficult to have, it, to have that in the hardware community. And I think it's, it's a real challenge for, uh, for, for, for the research in, in general. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm finished. I, uh, I'm sorry about this. Uh, I'm not showing you the demo, but uh, just to, to, uh, to recap, we have a website, we have a GitHub, and I insist again, the, the inscription is, is free. You just have to send a mail to register at cortecclub.fr, and, uh, and you will have access to this platform with a reservation mechanism and so on. We, don't, we still don't have a policy to uh, arbitrate between the reservation because we do not have enough user, but uh, we, well, as previous uh, talk, we, we had a long discussion with, uh, with Yvon at Orbit. We had a collaboration with them, and, uh, and, and that's very interesting. Okay, thank you. All right.
Bring them on. The questions. Where are they? The question. Yeah, I have one question that is not exactly on your um, slides, but I was wondering about the state of the the French radio community. Is there some? Can you mention that we occasionally run into people from France, but not all that often. No. Um, no, that that's, uh, there's not that many. Actually, we had a, a strong choice to make. Uh, in France, there is something which is called Open Air Interface, which is deployed and which is developed in, in Nice. And uh, but at that time, in 2011, it was not uh, you know mature enough. But now it's beginning to be uh, supported by, uh, for instance, Nokia, Alcatel, and so on. So maybe that's the reason. But uh, I I don't know exactly why. What what I notice in my uh, research environment is that the, w the people that I see here, they, are, they know signal processing and they know Linux and, and, and uh, you know, uh, all kind of geek stuff. And in France, it's more like, well, if you know signal processing, you don't, you're not necessarily a good programmer. And maybe it's why uh, there are less people like that. But, but there are some in, 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 in like uh, telecom, um, uh, telecom Institute in France that do so. W would it help? Like, I'd maybe that even exists to have like a fr like a French mailing list or something like that. Like a French what? Like in the in a mailing list in French language. And I know I'm putting you on the spot here. Like I could ask anyone from other countries the same question, but <laughs> but you're on the stage right now, and I have the microphone. So do you think? <laughs> yeah. so, uh, do, do you think that would help if there would be uh, like um, some kind of community can that can discuss questions in? In their, in their local language, in your case, French. Well, well, we we do that in our lab, but it's, it's limited to the five persons <laughs> working. So, uh, yes, we we actually we hope we hope that it it will grow up. I mean, I'm I'm not I'm, I'm agnostic. I mean, uh, will, will it be GNU Radio or something else? Something will grow up and and come up that will um, make people enable people to program radio. Okay, so. Uh, uh, my intuition is that this this uh, environment is very good, and I'm trying to to uh, to advertise on it. But uh, uh, well, the the way we do it is that we teach it to the students, and then the students, you know, when they come and they become, they, if they ever do a PG or if they ever work go to industry, they have this knowledge now. But we started that three years ago, so it's uh, yeah, you know. So Raj, can you can you start setting up? your stuff, and yeah, we yeah, have more yeah. questions. Tom? Yeah. So to follow up on uh, what Martin said, at first I really appreciate you coming over here and explaining to us in the US what you're doing over there, that's, that's great. What kind of outreach could we maybe do as a Gin Radio community over in France? We've got, we, we've got Germany. Uh, <laughs> Martin helped set that up. But uh, we go to FOSDEM every year, uh, and so we are starting to build kind of a, you know, have a presence there. But from your perspective, is there any outreach that we could do more to help engage that? Well, I think we can try to meet you in Germany and discuss about that and see wh well if, if we can do some kind of uh, European GNU radio uh, meeting. I don't know. I, I was not aware of that, that, that Germany was so, uh, uh, you know, uh, in relation with, with, uh, with GNU radio. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we can discuss that offline. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really open to that. And I think that the people that in my lab will be very happy about that. But we have few of us, I mean, we're three or four. 